good afternoon everyone so today we are going to do two programs so the first program would be a text to speech program so i'll present my screen right here. i hope everyone can see us too so today we're going to start with the text to speech again i'll i have even uploaded the today's two program books that is j3 sign up and day three text to speech on github play i have also placed the link on the chat screen so kindly download and follow along if you want to so going back to text to speech so right now everyone may not have used text to speech but text to speech is like whatever data you give in a string format like a message you have the android phone reads it out aloud so that that has various applications in the current world sometimes like driving so the navigations we get in google maps that is like a text to speech version so we get like turn right from the next after the next 100 meters so that is like if you have the text to speech module or the text to speech api you can implement that in your own app so for doing something like that what you can what you can do is use the text to speech api i'll also tell you about a site called android developer android so whatever you need to know you can just search for text to speech whatever i wanted to know followed by android developer so this will give me the first link as uh, developer.android.com this is like the official documentation of google so here you can learn about any method anything you want to know so this is the official version and so this is about the text to speech so you also have options like java and Kotlin if you want to I have selected Java. So this tells us about whatever all the methods are there for this class and what are all functions are there, what and all variables are there, what and all fixed constants are there, anything like that. So this is going to give us everything, everything we need to. So for text to speech, we can use a method for it. So we'll go and see what is required. So moving forward, we have divided it into two parts text to speech API. Then we'll get to know the XML code and then the Java code also. And finally, see the app running live. So the text-to-speech API. So the text-to-speech API is very simple. So it's uh, somewhat like you need a two things to make a text-to-speech API. So the constructor is like you need a context. Again, a context from where you're starting. And then you need to initialize the text-to-speech uh, class. To in it, like in Android, what happens is that we we're gonna use some resources. These are called media resources. So like playing a song or listening, like playing some music out loud. Uh, every music output is like a media resource. We are using media resources, and media resources needs to be used efficiently because suppose we are playing a song, and if you're playing a song right now, and a phone call comes. We want the phone call to stop the music and tell us that a phone call is incoming. We want the phone to do that for us. But if we don't write the code properly, what happens is that the call, the media player won't be stopped and the song will continue. And if the, even though the call comes, we won't be able to listen to the ringtone or anything. So, and also like, even if you close the app, if you like press the middle button and just don't kill the app, but just rather close it, and keep it in recents. So what happens is that media players still plays, uh, like apps like Spotify, Ghana, everything plays in the background. So that's how it's done. They have the media resources. So similarly, text to speech is an example of a media resource. We are using that to tell, uh, like, speak out something. So, yeah. So we, it has a simple constructor, like it has a context and a text to speech dot on it listener. So this is the one which initializes it, initializes it and starts up the text to speech service. So it's done something like this. We created a variable T1. So it's of the type text to speech. So then we get, got the application context. Get application context is what is it automatically finds the application context, what is there, and gives it back to us. Apart from that, as we said, we need an on it listener, a function called on it listener. So this is implemented by the text to speech class. So text to speech class dot on init listener. 
So what this does is this initializes the text to speech object and then starts it. So how it works is we just call it in the uh, like as a second parameter and on completion it runs this method. So on in it it has a status and the, if the status is like zero, it means that it didn't run properly or something like that. If the status is one, it means it ran properly. So it's like in status, you'll get the status and then the status has a value. So the text to speech dot error is a final variable, a fixed constant that has some value. And we're going to check if the status is not equal to that because we don't want errors. We don't, we want to know if this statement executed correctly. So we check the value of the status, which is received by us and compare it with the error final variable. And if it doesn't match, that means the code was code ran successfully and the text to speech variable was initialized. And if that is the case, we're going to set a language. We need a language. So like every phone has a different language. So if we, we can change the language in our settings, like everywhere the language will be changed. Like if we have English, we have, we can have French. We can have German, anything, everywhere the language will be changed. So we can set the language and we by default use UK, United Kingdom English. So we set the language to an English one. So what now this variable can be used to speak out something using the locale of UK. So this is like to define which language you need. We'll see what other choices are there. We'll see that in a while. And then going forward, the speech method. So this text to speech object has a speech method. What this speech method does is this is this takes a string, string of message, whatever you want to say, and along with some parameters, and then says that output to the user. Says that out using the media resources and a voice is played, whatever string you wrote is, is played. So that is done using the speak method. So the speak method takes a character sequence. That is the text we need, which needs to be spoken out. It has a queue mode. A queue mode is like there are two types of queue mode. So if if you want to refer anything, we can just access it. Go over here. Let us take using the official documentation. So we'll scroll till we really speak. Another method called another so we can use this method also to do that. So we can use this method also to do. So there's a link, and that is this method. So this is the new method of speak that was added in API level 21. So like every method has was added sometime long back. Like this was added in API level 4, this was added in API level 21 because this was deprecated in API level 21. So going over here, we can see the queue mode. The queue mode has two values. Let's see the queue add or queue flush. What queue add does is, suppose I put a string as hello. Then after hello, I again put a string as BMSID. So that should be like hello BMSID. Suppose hello was being spoken out by the phone. I added BMSID, then it would go hello BMSID. Or suppose we have a very long scene. Hello, I am a software developer. So everything is added into the queue. This is what this does. Is. Whereas what about this is it flushes. Suppose whatever is there before, it removes that. And what is the new input will be the only thing that will be spoken. So if I say, hello, I am. So am will be only used because it has removed everything that was in the front of it. So if you want to see about it, you can just click over here. So you can see queue mode where all entries in the playback queue are dropped and replaced by the new entry. Whereas the queue add has, where the new entry is added to the end of the playback queue. So it acts like a queue. So the whoever goes in first comes out first. So this is the queue add and the queue flush. So these are the two variables that are used inside this queue mode. And parameters are some extra parameters you need, but we don't usually need it like for our program right now. We don't use, usually need that. 
So if you see parameters and some extra parameters, like if you want to specify what app is playing the song, or you want to specify the engine, or if you want to specify the volume, or if you want to specify what should be the pitch or anything like that, some extra parameters that can be even set will be um, stored in form of a bundle and then passed over. So this takes a type of bundle. If you want to see, you can see what is like a bundle is just a type which has many types, like it can have multiple values. So apart from that, at the end, we need an ID, an ID which will recognize this distinct uh, and distinguish every speak method from the other. Like whatever text you have written, that has an ID. So we can use anything. It takes a string value. You can basically write even ID, the word ID itself. It will work because that's a unique identifier. We haven't used that yet. So anything can be used. So this is like from the official documentation. This is about the speak API. So if you want to see like um, so this is the speak API. So they takes two uh, four parameters. The older one didn't have an utterance ID. So what happens is that if you use the older one, there will be a strike out. That method will be striked out in Android Studio, showing that it was deprecated. So we have three three main, uh, like now we have four, four parameters. The first one is the text, a character sequence of all the text that needs to be spoken, a Q word that can be either Q add or Q flush, then params, that is all the extra parameters we require and null can be passed inside this. This says that it can be null and the utterance ID is a unique string that can identify a request. What this, para this function returns is the int value. It's either error or success. You can even see that what is the value of this. So error is usually minus one. And there would be success somewhere over here. So if we use the word uh, like error, or if we use the word success, we can find out what the value is after it is executed. This is different from the first thing we saw. This is error and success. The other thing was different. So this is for just this peak method. So this is how it looks. So T1 is the variable which we made, which was text to speak, uh, speech, and then it had a method called speak. And this was whatever that need to, needs to be spoken out. And this is like using the by default flush method for the queue. The params are null, and there is a default ID. Like we have made a unique ID that is named as ID itself. So this is how we have to implement the text to speech code. So if you move forward and remember, like I always said, memory cleanup is required in Android Studio. So whenever we stop like an app, I'll show you. So there's something called an Android lifecycle. What an Android lifecycle is, this is very much important. So what an Android lifecycle is, this tells us how the app runs. So every time we create an app, an activity will be launched. What activity will be launched? The one we saw in the manifest, which has then some extra tags named as intent filters, like main, launcher. So that would be launched. Every time an activity is launched, the onCreate method is called first. The first thing to be called is an onCreate method that we have seen. So inside this, if we see, this is the onCreate method. The first thing that is called. And after on create, the on start method is called, as well as the on resume method is called. So apart from that, the, then after all these three are called, the activity starts running. If another activity, suppose uh, like we have opened an app, opened an app, and then we have two apps in reasons. One is Chrome, and one is suppose Google, Google app or Gmail. So take Chrome and Gmail. Suppose we are running Gmail right now. So the activity is running currently. And that activity is in the foreground, which we can see. We can see the inbox on our screens right now. So if we switch that app to the other app, that is Chrome, what happens is that for the first app called Gmail, the first app Gmail, the on pause method is called. That means another activity has come into the foreground. And this activity has stopped. This can be anyways, like it can be even in a single activity. And another activity, we can use something called intents to go to and navigate between activities. So if we use intents, another activity will come into the foreground 
due to which the current activity will go into the background due to which the on pause method is automatically called and when user returns to the activity the resume method is called and after resuming the activity is again into the running state and it stays here so there are different methods on pause is there there's an on stop method suppose we have killed the app so it will go to the on stop method the app will be killed and then if the user navigates back to that activity the on create is killed and this is restarted or either the user can restart the activity something like refresh or something like that due to which user again navigates to the on restart on start and starts over here see if the app is killed you have to start with the on create method whereas the app is restarted you can start from the on start method so what we need to know is if we are running the app over here in this green section and the app stops we need to clear the resources we need to clear all the media resources we are holding we need to stop them so that if the user stops the app and tries to use we won't be disturbed by our like we shouldn't still keep the media resources to see that we can use this there's a inbuilt function called on pause so this is by default called whenever an app is paused whenever an app another app is has come in front so the super dot on pause pause the constructor which is in the parent class that is required like that is by default there so we have to check if t1 is not equal to one that means the media resources have not been freed so the media resources have some value they are not null so we need to stop the media resources and then shut down the media resources so that the memory leakage won't be there so memory cleanup is always required that is that that is an important step so going forward let's check out the code so here we are so this is the program so let us first see the example file so to know how the program looks right so there are three things over here we can see one is the name which just says what the app's name is so we don't require this you can just minimize it and there are two things one is a edit text as we can see over here and the other is a button so what we can do is in the edit text the user may write some data something like hello or anything what he wants and then when he whenever he presses this button the convert text to speech button what happens is that whatever is written on the screen would be fetched and then the com the android phone will speak out that for you so the edit text here is here and there is a button so the button has the name text to speech and this has text underscore in black so this also has an input type of multi line so we can have many lines inside that we can have multi line input we can have a long way so there's a button and then that's it so we have two things that that is an edit text as well as a button let us see where they connected in a java code so we have an edit text over here and a button over here so if we highlight this everything will be highlighted which is highlighting over here so we highlight this see the text input is highlighted so this is where the edit text is joined and this is where the text to speech button is running. So the two things are this. So first we need to fetch the text from edit text. And then whenever the user presses the button, we need to fetch the text from edit text and send it to the speak function so that it can speak out for us. So first of all, as we saw, we need to initialize the speech of it. So we need T1. T1 is a text to speech object. Text to speech T1. So we'll initialize that. We got the application context, and then we have an on init listener. So it is a default method. So we needed this override, override um, variable name, we call override keyword. And then we have an on init method. It takes status, and then it has the it gets the status. So if it gets the status, we can check if the text is which is error or not. If it is not equal to error, that means everything will fine and we can set the language to UK. So we can also see whatever, what and all other languages are there. So there are many number of languages. So you can select any one of them. So to get all the options, like whatever is there, just like after any dot, just press. If you just um, backspace and press this dot, it will come. Or if it, does, if it doesn't come, you can just press over here. Press Control and Space. That will give all the options that can be used over here. 
So using that, we had selected UK. So let's get back to UK. So we have the T1 object. Now what we need to do is get an on-click listener for this button so that whenever user click it, clicks this button, we can get the text inside this using like get text and then send it to this T1. So we have set an on-click listener. Android Studio shortens the privileges for being purposes only. Otherwise, the code is complete there, completely there. Just shorten so that it looks better. So the here the whole code is like move around click this and move around on click to everything is there. So what we need to do is we need to get the text. So we get text dot input dot get text, then we convert it into a string object. So we got the string as to speak, and then we have a toast. Let's get back to what is a toast. And then we have t one dot speak, and then we passed the same string which we got over here and then change the value of flush type uh, q type to flush and we don't need any parameters and just change the id to id itself and then if we run the app right here, so. and also the on post method as we talked because clearing the resources is important. The on post does something like if T1 is not equal to none, that is something is there. Just stop it and shut down the process. Shut down this variable called T1. It requires resources. That's why it takes some time. So that's why we have a on init list. So it will listen till it is created. And after it is created, this will be executed on it method. And then the status code will be returned. And I will so this is a very easy program so what we need to remember is this one and this is the older version there we don't didn't need this id so if we remove that id that would go to the older version and after this one i'll show you why it is replicated and how can we see if it is replicated okay. So, hey. That's how it is. Hey. I think I'm listening. Hey. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. As you can see, the app is working right now. And this is the screen. So as I was talking, so this is what does everything. So we are passing the values, the string, whatever we got in the input text, whatever we got over here, we took that out here there, and then convert it as a string and passed it to the speed function. And if you see the older version, we can see that the speed function has a cut across it. This says that this method was deprecated. So if you press on you see there will be a new method for this it shows that it was deprecated and it is no longer used so they have a new method with a fourth parameter called string of utterance id so that's how we can check like if anything shows up like this that means there's a strike mark across that that is no longer used that is no longer practiced or it's not not even longer to be like they don't recommend you to use that they haven't they would have an, another method that you can use easily for the same purpose so as you can see, we have check the code and that's how it clicks. So this is the app and I'll go through it again one last time. So there's two, but one is a edit text, another is a button, and then we connected them, and then we created an object of text to speech variable, and then we initialized it with a local of YouTube for as a language and then we just got the text then we spoke out the text using this feedback and i was talking about this toast what are toast toasts are like small messages messages that pop out on the screen so if you press this button we hey can yeah. see there's a toast this is called a toast whatever is hey popped yeah. out on the screen so the toast has some features like what where you need to toast the message so it needs a context so get base context does what is it just directly returns the context or you can say main activity dot this that would also be main activity. 
so this is like the context right now we have a main activity if you don't want to like see and specify you can use the directly the get base context method what that does is it directly gets whatever the context is so it would get right here it would have be having main activity dot this over here as the return value and then to speak has whatever we need to print or show it on the screen so two sticks a few parameters uh, like parameters like three parameters first one is the context second is what to show and third one is the duration of the post so if we see right now that's yeah. a short post so it will go in one so there's another there's a, what is it there's a length line what this does is the two says for a longer one so post messages are usually helpful for the user so if the user is doing something something like you have logged in like there's an app for logging in you pressed in the email uh you gave the email address you gave the password and the password was wrong a user can be informed that using a toast message a toast message which says the password didn't match or something like the password is weak so if you see right now so we see the post message it will stay there for a longer duration of time so this is a longer right. post as compared to the one which we were using before that was length underscore short so this is the toast message this is very helpful this is, this will be used a lot in android programming because you need this can be also sometimes used for debugging but that is not recommended using this for debugging so apart from that we also have a debugger attached so you can use that and so this is the function that shuts down every process like whenever the app is killed when even if the app is killed it goes to on pause it goes to on pause then on stop then the app is killed or the distro activity shut down or distro Hello. Yeah, I got disconnected. So I was asking if anyone has, anyone has any doubts, or no, she can answer. Or we move to the next program. So if anyone doesn't have any doubts, we can move forward. So we can start with the next program.
So for that, you need some basic regular expressions. We'll see whatever is required. We'll see that. Let us see some basic things like we should know that a small d is a digit. And apart from that, we have letters. We can have letters. So we can have letters like in square brackets. And that can say even uh, till where we need the letters. So those. We have a square bracket over here which goes from A to A hyphen C. That means that all the letters starting from the small letter A to the small letter C can be matched. This is like regex is basically used to match expressions. So let's start with the code and then we'll come to regex. So now we're going to act like we are well versed how Android Studio looks, how the program looks. So we're going to start directly by looking how should we look at a program. So like how to get a basic idea, outline, what a program does to so do it with me. So if you see right now, we need something that would tell us about all the pages that are there in this app. So that would be something like manifest. We can go check there if there are more than one pages only. And if the app uses any permissions or, or what is the name of the app and stuff like that. So if we see right now, they don't use any permissions. So if any permissions were there, they would be uh, they would have been written over here above the application tag inside the manifest tag. So right now, as we can see, we don't have any we don't have any uh, on this screen. Like we don't have any permissions, extra permissions. And then we can see how many activity tags are there. So as I can see, there's one activity tag over here and one over here. So that means like this is the starting and the ending version for the same activity tag. So there are two activity tags. That means that this app has two pages. They can be a main, like any pages, like suppose we have a sign up page and a home screen. Like we are using Instagram or anything. We need to log in first. That would be one page. And after we have logged in, we get into a feed. That is an another page. So like two page process. So similarly, this all app also has these two activities as we can see. One is this one and the other one is this one. So if we see closely, this activity doesn't have anything inside that. Whereas this activity has something inside. And that is the intent filter which we talked about yesterday. That means that this activity has something different. What is different about this is that this activity will be the main activity that will be launched as soon as the user opens up his or her app. So as soon as the app is launched, we can see that this has an intent filter that tells us that this is the launcher activity and this is the main activity. So if we paste this inside another activity tag, that would become the main activity. So right now, as we can see, we have two activities inside this. One is the login activity. And the other one goes as the main activity. So we got our two names. So now to find about two act found out two activities and their respective XML files, we can go to Java, com.allen.prop3, and then we have our two activities. One is the main activity, and the other one is the login activity. There also would be a subsequent XML file for this. Most probably it is named like if the activity name is made, it would be like activity underscore uh, main for XML or something like that. So we can see what is that exactly by going through the uh, activity, just go directly to the on create part. And then after the super on create method, like super on create is calling the activity, like on create, we are overriding it and adding our own implementation. But Android has a default implementation. So to call that default implementation before adding our own implementation, we have to call this using.
I'm sorry, I had, I had some network issues. So let's get back to yeah. So to get the activity of any Java file, like for Java file to get the subsequent activity, what we can do is just click directly on the set content view that would be an example file. Just press your control button and then click using the left mouse button and you will reach there. So this is the activity for like the front end part of how the login activity should be. So we basically have two pages. First one looks like the sign up page, as you can see over here. And the other one looks like a login page. So basically we would have to sign ourselves up first. And then after we sign up, we can later use those credentials to log in. So this would, that could be the basic functionality of the app. We can check that by going forward. And we'll see or we'll see the code how it's written. So let first of all we should see how the example is written. So here we have a sign up text view. A text view this just tells us what the screen is about. So it doesn't give us that information, much information. Going to the next thing is the text view username. That means that any text in front of it would need the username tag. Like whatever your username is should be entered over here, and the password should be entered over here. So we got some information and right? the sign up button would be responsible for signing users. Up. So if we see right now, the username has an edit text with the name text underscore username and the other one has text underscore password. So we can search for them and where they are used in our main activity because we are seeing the activity, activity underscore main. Let's go to main activity and find them. We know that both of them are type edit text and this is a type of button so searching like we can find somewhat similar names a button and two edit text one says username and the other one says password it might not be compulsory that it is this username stands for that one so to check that you need to find see if the id is save as what we had seen so for username we have the id text underscore username and for password we have text underscore password that is exactly what we saw over there in the activity underscore main file, text underscore password and text underscore username. So we got to know our two buttons, the two edit text, and then we have a button, button signer, again with the name button underscore signer. So we found out all the three elements that are there on the first screen. And if we think like carefully, we can know that user might have inputted his text in a username then has inputted his text and password and then clicked on the sign up button. So the sign up button would need an on click listener, an on click listener so that some action can be performed. Some action like doing something, popping uh, some result or something like that. If the password was right, if everything went correctly or not. So we have a button sign up dot set on click listener dot this. So we got an on click listener on button sign up. And there is an on click method over here, which goes all the way down. So this on click method will be responsible for getting the username from this edit text, getting the password from this, and then sending that value to somewhere, getting itself checked if it is correct. But it's a sign up screen, so there won't be any checking. So we have to check if the password is strong or not. And if the password is strong, we can directly add the username and the password into this app and then save it and send it somewhere else and then later use that data so if you look closely the on click method you get the two details the username and the password as text underscore username which we use right now dot get text to get the stick and convert it into a string and similarly if it's the same thing for the password then we have a method like this, an if method so if works like we have something over here called validate password that looks like a function and that has password as the parameter so if we look closely we have a function over here or if we can't find the function as we already know just press ctrl and then click on this we'll be navigated to the function wherever it is so reaching over here you can see it has a type return of boolean that means if it is true this will execute and if it is false this will not execute so what does this do so it goes for pattern and create a patterns object and then combines a regular expression so there should be some regular expression over here 
and we can see that there is a regular expression of that. Let's say some some weird shape. So we don't know how it works. So something like it has matched the password somehow with the pattern, and then it returns is a returns a boolean. If the password is a valid password, then it will return a true. That will run this case. Else, if it returns a false, this won't run, and this would run. And this shows that it's an invalid password. A text, a toast will be displayed on the screen that shows invalid password. So this, uh, that's what we can understand till now. So what this function would do is it takes a regular expression, it takes a password, checks if the password complies with, like is matching with the same pattern as the regular expression. They have the same pattern. Then the matcher returns to um, this function called matches will return true or false. If the pattern is similar, it will return a true or else it will return a false. So we need to understand what kind of passwords do we need. So we can do it using regular expressions. So we can see what regular expression is given by default and see if a password is same as that. So if we see closely, we need to know a little bit about regular expression. So as we saw, as we were seeing right now, we need something like a digit T. Like we need some digits. So I let us see what we saw. We saw A Z when within square brackets. That means that we can input any character from A to Z. So that means that we can have any character from large uh, capital A to capital Z. And similarly, we can also have characters from small A to small Z. So these are the two things. And then we see there's a slash D. That means we need a number. And apart from that, we also see there's something else like this. So we need a special character inside this because everything under square bracket needs to be there. So like it should be there. Uh, we'll know if it is compulsory. So there should be a special character inside this, followed by again some A to Z or small A to Z. That means or even digits or even another special character. So this, this tells us that this can have a minimum length of eight. So if we see this whole regular expression, this is started with a uh, caret sign. This caret sign says that this should be at the beginning of the expression. Whereas the dollar sign says that this should be at the end of the expression. So this is how the regular expression looks. So I think it should have a capital letter, a small letter, a special character, and I think even a number. So these are all the requirements that should be in a password. So we'll try if we have a password like that and see what happens. So we'll try to run the app first. So that's all this app. So like as far we have seen, we only know this much right now. That it has a button. So we we'll enter a username, we'll enter a password. Then it whenever we press that button, it will get the username get that password, do some validation using the valid password method. And if it works out, it will do something. And else, it will return an invalid password post. So let us see what is there. So, app is this one. So we have, uh, uh, I will start by the So this is our app. This has a dark one. But we, I think it should have been like this, white. So what could happen is, so we yesterday learned about themes. So let us see if something is there in the themes. So it's under values, there are themes. And there's a theme dot night. And that would be like in latest Android, what happens is that you have a dark theme for every app, mostly every app. So the dark theme is automatically made using Android Studio most of the times. Otherwise you can choose your new colors and anything like that. So this has a theme called day night. That means that 
it can have a dark theme as well as a light theme. So it depends upon what is the theme of the app, like theme of the flow. So that is why it has a dark, everything is inversed. So if you see right now, we have an inverse game. So we'll use the name Alan. And then what we use a password. So password can be capital A L N E L at the rate one, two, three. So we have to see if it works. I guess it works because we use the login screen. The login screen was the next screen we were seeing. So what that did is if the password was violated, we just went into this function, uh, this method, and this would have been called. So let us see what happens inside this. So we have made a bundle, a bundle like we were talking about right now. What is a bundle like in the previous text to speech API? So we created a bundle, and in the bundle, we have put some strings. So the sub, some strings look like user, lab, actor in 2018, and then we passed in the username and the password we got. So that's like we joined them and created it's something like a map, a map in Java. So you have a map, it has a key, uh, and you have a value. So the key is user, and the pass lab, the other key is lab at the rate 2018, and the password is the password itself. Uh, value is password itself. So you made a map, and I think you have to pass it to the new activity. So if we see closely, we have made an intent. What an intent is? The intent is used to navigate from one activity to another activity. So if we see we were in main activity not Java, and as soon as I entered the password and press the button, what happens is that the text changes to login. That means we are in activity underscore login. That means we are in the login activity. And that was done using this line. Intent ID equals to new intent, this comma login activity dot class, followed by start activity. And in the parameter, you need to pass the same variable. And just we didn't just go to a new activity. We even added something extra to that. We had put extra data inside that. Like we put a data, called data, and we pass the bundle. The bundle we, we made right now. So if we go into the next activity, and if we like try to do the same thing, so the A capital M N N other it. One, two. I will enter something wrong. I entered one, two instead of one, two, three. And see, there was a login field attempt. Now I input it three and then press login. And the login was successful. Again, I remove the three and press login. It failed again. But this time, it is not login field one. It was login field one before. Now it's login field two. So let us check out what the code says in our activity. So we are coming from another activity into this activity using the intent. And first of all, let, let us get an idea about this activity as well. There's a username edit text, there's a password edit text followed by a button. As we saw the right now, this button does this, it checks and violates the password. And if it is correct, it displays the message login successfully. Else it says says login attempt failed. And followed by a number like one, and how many times you have failed. Button. So if we see here, we have two edit text followed by a button, and we have two strings, a user and a pass. A user and a pass. This login activity doesn't need anything, but uh, like doesn't have is getting something by default. So we are sending something over here. In the intent, we are putting extra the bundle. The bundle has the username as well as the password. So maybe we'll store them over here. Or we'll use them to store the values from activity login and match them with what is coming from them. So we'll see the code. This is just initializing and connecting XML to this. And then we have a login button object listener. Now we got a bundle. Bundle, we had we had passed a bundle of type bundle in the extra method. This is for the put extra method. So this is used to put extra stuff into the intent and send it to a new activity. For receiving it, we need the get intent dot get bundle extra. So this is the extra thing which we need. So this is a bundle extra because we know what we passed was type bundle. If we get a string, so we can get 
string array list extra we can get string extra as also well. get string extra like this one. so this won't work because we are type passing that into a type called bundle so because we know that we are using a bundle so we'll use the by default method called get bundle extra and this is the method and remember if we are sending something over here we have sent set up a key value and what that key value needs to be the same as um, over here whatever that was over here it needs to be same as that so we have data in small as a single word so you need to have the same thing over here and over here if you even make it capital it won't work so it is case sensitive and it needs to be exact every time a key needs to be exact even this one the one we are using over here so we got a bundle now from the bundle we can get a string using the key so using the key user we got a user and using the key lab at 201 it we got a pass so remember everything should be same l is capital at the rate 201 l is capital at the rate 201 if we are changing anything over here we have to change it over here also and vice versa so in user and pass we have our real credential which were passed on from the previous activity into the login activity so what we need to do is on press of this login button we need to fetch whatever there is in user we need to fetch whatever there is in password and we need to match it with the ones we have already which ones we already have so if we get everything correct we have to print out login successful else we have to print out login attempt fail so on click we'll see that a user one and a user and a pass one is set the text login username get text to string this gives us the username entered in the login screen here we get the password entered in the login screen so now using the java sequence method which is for the string by default is there we check if user the one we have already have dot equals to the one which we just wrote right now and so this two both should be true pass one should be equal to the pass which we made earlier so if these both are true that means the login attempt was successful so we put a toast of type length long saying login successful else we have a variable called count let us see if it was initialized yeah so by default the count was zero so if it didn't work out this thing that means that you, either the username or the password something was wrong so the else part runs the count is incremented so the first time it ran it was zero so now it will become one and it will see if count is three count is not three right now it is one so it will print out login failed plus count so login failed one login failed two login failed three won't come because the time uh, count will reach three this will be executed and then a failed login attempts will be a toast called failed login attempts will be displayed on the screen and you will set the button login the button login is this button and you'll set it to set enable mode to false what that does is right now we can press this button suppose we press it right now failed login attempts now we can't press this button the color has been gone that means the button has been disabled because we tried to uh, use like uh, the wrong password or the wrong usernames a multiple number of times. Or now we have it as three. So after three attempts, the login is stopped. So if you see right now, that's about it. Like if we see the code, we had two activities: the main activity and the login activity. And we understood how to look at a code and understand what it actually does it like the basic ideology would be the same go through manifest you can know if any functions are there you can know what is the starting function at least a starting activity go to that activity see how everything works out we have everything over here and then if you see it just gets a username a password checks if the password is strong if it is strong it bundles it into a bundle sends an intent into the other activity and passes the bundle to it the other activity receives the bundle over here it extracts the username and password and on click of the login button it checks if the values are saved 
if that if they are saying which trends are not and successful else till three counts it will print out login trade one login trade two and then at the third count it will say login for has been attempts have been failed and then it will set the login button to be false that means no one can click on it again so that's it about this code so we saw everything where so we see there's nothing in java apart from these two files and in layout if we check we can always find this to xml files we don't even have anything to probably has right now the background for the icon so that is not okay so we saw right now whatever is there in this app so we saw we also know to our projects so this was used to make something you can easily get that uh, get a regular expression for like a strong password or anything we can just replace anything which is better over here and the rest of the program can be saved because it will compile for that regular expression whatever we have mentioned and then do all the computations and check if the password is strong or the password is most strong anything we do. so if we don't have a strong password let's see so this is the sign up screen it's something like if we have just panel and we press sign up it shows invalid password so even Alan at the it will work. So we need a number also. So Alan at the it one. Okay, we need minimum eight characters also. So what what is this? Another two. Okay. So something so I think I can do. So every time the app runs, the data is lost because we are not saving it somewhere. We are just passing it to the next activity. We are not doing anything to save the data. So I will not click on this. I will close this one. So we are not doing anything to save the data. That is why the data will be lost every time we reopen the app. So every time we reopen the app, we are created with the sign up page followed by the login page. So that's how it works. And this is all about the other program, the basic sign up program. So, this is the UI right now, and we can see it's easy to implement. We can even go through that. We have a constraint, we have at the top, we have a text view, and with that, we have two text views over here one is this one, and the other is this one, and two edit text. So, this edit text is aligned with this username. Username should be aligned with the login, and login should be aligned with it. It's aligned, so you can do any. Like any way you can arrange it, you can push it down. So password is there, and then there is a button which is aligned with this edit text. And similarly, there is another screen for sign up page, and that's it about this program. So if anyone has any doubts, they can ask. Uh, sir, then uh, at any point of time, only one uh, can yeah. sign up and uh, he can log in. That's at one point of time, on a single mobile phone, only one person can sign up for login. This okay. is if we connect it to a real database, something like Firebase, MongoDB, or anything. And then we can save the data on the database rather than saving it on the phone. Then multiple persons can log in, and even from multiple phones, okay. Like, okay. the same user can log in. So if you want to save the username and passwords, we'll have to use some kind of database. So what basically, if you want to save it off, you have two op options again. So either the first option is save it offline on your own mobile phone, or the other one is save it in an online database. So benefit of saving it offline is like you can have pri privacy. You can keep it to yourself. And the benefit of saving online is that you can access that from anywhere. So in this case, if you wanted to save it offline, 
what you can do is some use something called SQL light. So SQL, we have already have heard about SQL. And SQL, what is SQL light? Is a light implementation for Android phones. So we can use SQL light, create a model, and then after creating a model, like we have to create a basic uh, model would be like a table, a table, and it will have two values, uh, some primary key as ID, apart from that a username and password. And every time if we uh, lo like log in, we can check the username, go search for the password, what there was, match it, and if it matches up, go forward. That would be the offline implementation. The online implementation whereas would be like we have to connect it to some sort of um, database which is served online. So like MongoDB or Firebase or anything like that. Firebase is basically used like every starter. It's good to do Firebase for starting. The starting it's very easy. You learn easily, and there are a lot of videos even on YouTube you'll find about them. And so using that, you can easily find the uh, like find match the password if it was correct, and then go forward. So that would be the online version. So these are like the two versions. And apart from that, else every time an app is destroyed, an app is killed, the app is killed, the data is lost, whatever is sent, like we have done right now, the bundles, which we are sending just over intents and not saving anything. A third option is also there, but that is not usually used to save passwords and all. That is called stored preferences. So you can have some stored preferences, something like Suppose my app has a light code and a dark code. Now the next time I open my app, I need the dark code. If I had set it, set the mode as dark last time, I want every time when I open the app, to, the mode to be dark. So what I would do is instead of saving that on an online database, that would be very difficult because every time you have to have the you should have the internet to go fetch that, get that back, and then set that theme. So what you can do, and even SQLite for having a one word answer. So like we can have a Boolean variable is dark. So if it is true, that means we have the dark mode. If it is false, that means we have the light mode. So instead of again saving in SQLite database and making all the models, what we can do is use something called stored procedure, um, stored variables. And that would be like a single value that can be used in an app. Like you can store that single value, store preferences. The store preferences, you can use save the single value. And again, you have to have a key for that. And every time you want to find out what the value was, you need to use the key, get that value, and see if it was dark or light, and accordingly change whatever the theme was. So you don't need to have a database for that. And you, that would be a lighter process and a faster. So that would be the answer if I made if I if you understood the term, yes. and if anyone else has any doubts, they can also see. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, if you have any doubts, please ask Kalin. Else, uh, for uh, 10 minutes, you can revise whatever it is being taught in uh, three days um, FTP. Uh, I'll send you just uh, in another 10 minutes, I'll be sending you one Google form uh, respect to quiz. So you can attempt that quiz um, by 3.30. I'll be sending the Google form in the WhatsApp group. Uh, in another 10 minutes. All of you, please um, attempt that quiz.